We can have kids, not just old trail kids, but organizations and school children from the whole region walking around this place and learning what the future holds and how they can go about it. And Old Trail being a resource to other organizations to get these kinds of initiatives underway, all the better. It's a part of our mission. Uh, we're, not, we're not here just to serve our Old Trail community. We're here to serve everybody in Northeast Ohio. About 10 years ago, I think we stepped it up a notch. Um, the National Recreation Area became the Cuyahoga Valley National Park. And I think as an organization, we said we need to do our part because we are in the National Park. So what could we do to help facilitate environmental sustainability and, and really be stewards of where we are? This was a risk. Uh, we could have very easily spent half the money, put in a package plant, done what everyone else does, and just live with whatever um, stipulations the EPA put on us over time. We wanted to go beyond that. And I would say to any leader, any organization, do what's right, not what's easy. And a lot of times people are afraid of the initial cost, but when you do something bold like this, good things come from it. Um, this project was about $950,000. Um, most of that was the cost of the greenhouse and putting a building around the living machine because we wanted to use it as a classroom and we wanted to engage our students in the process. We could have put in a $350,000 package plant and done away with it and that was it. Um, I think it was bold. It was bold on the part of our board of trustees to support it. Um, we've raised about half the money and, and we basically used some reserves that we had available. Uh, that we've been holding for the package plant replacement uh, for the remainder. Um, we could, again, we could have done it cheaper, but don't look that way. That's not the best way to proceed. And I, I would say to any leader, do what's right. And we felt that this was the right way to go. The living machine itself is made up of a few different components, and let me describe those. Uh, behind me, there's a large wetland. Um, it's called a horizontal flow wetland. That horizontal flow wetland gets its water from a gravity-fed sewer that goes down to an 8,000-gallon primary tank at the bottom of the hill. That primary tank regulates flow and separates the solids from the gray water. The gray water is then dispensed through a diversion tank into the horizontal flow wetland that's carefully constructed through engineered gravel and the plant root systems to distribute the water side to side, horizontally, all the way across, back and forth. The water is then pushed inside the greenhouse into one of two tidal flow wetlands that operate much like a human lung. They, they empty and fill. That cycle happens about 17 times back and forth through the horizontal flow wetland to the tidal flow wetlands. Then, when the water is ready to be finished, it goes through a small vertical flow wetland, which is a skinny wetland behind me. It then, the water then goes through a UV, an ultraviolet light chamber. It gets thoroughly zapped to kill the remaining bacteria. Then it goes through a little um, pipe system with pumps to our tributary right behind me that flows under Riverview Road and into the Cuyahoga River. That is a 36-hour process, not using any chemicals, it's all natural, and it's swimmable water when it hits that tributary. Mm -hmm. 